Hello everybody and welcome back. <laughs> it's been a while, I hope you're all safe and well. Good news everybody, we have a new update and I've got lots of new features to show you. Uh, first thing I want to get into, uh, no we're not going to load a game, we're going to go to new game. We have a new map generator. Now, I know... I know there's a lot of people out there already already know about the update, uh, but I wanted to do a video for those that didn't and those that are just on the public branch. In order to get the update, you need to be on the test branch. I will put a link in the description below on how to do that. Um, okay, so to start with, we don't have a great deal of choices. The random map is very random. Um, you've got a choice of... Out, out, the, the density of the lakes, the density of the hills, the terrain height, the tree density, the forest amount. Now, you can go up to 0.6. If you do that, you'll get mostly water with a few little islands. Um, and like, if you go here, you get mostly hills with a few little lakes. I find I quite like the setting around 0 0.4, 0 0.4. Now, it doesn't give you a, a really complete map, but I'll, I'll explain that in a minute. Tree density, I wouldn't increase that if I was you, not unless you've got a really powerful computer. <laughs> I put it right up to 1.5 and it was like, uh, yeah, <laughs> it was slowing the game down already. Terrain height, I don't really like messing with because it doesn't really, the results aren't good. If you put it up to like 1.5, you'll end up with a hideous mountainous thing that you can't build on. So I'll leave the terrain height alone. I'm going to, these are... After fiddling about and moving things up and down, this is probably my favourite setting at the moment. Uh, forest, around, forest amount 1.25 doesn't seem to affect the frame rate really badly or anything, it looks quite good. You can do between 5 and 15 towns. You can select don't build anything so it'll give you a blank map. You can have just the cities or you can have cities with some roads in between. So we're going to select this. Uh, we're going to build cities and roads. We're going to build 15 towns. We're going to have a look how this looks. Oh, um, yeah, now it's going to, the loading screen is going to freeze here for a few minutes while it generates the town. It does take a few minutes, but it's, it's not too long. But uh, I shall pause and I shall be back when it when it's reloaded. Right, so, game's just loaded up. Um, let's just pause it here. So this is... This is the map you get on 0 .4, 0 0.4, so you, there's a lot of water and there's a lot of hills and got these various towns on little hills and places and here and there between. Now, you can see from here that it's, as I said, it is rather random with the way it distributes things. It's done it in a, it, it's a noise filter that creates this um, and it's like a... Um, I don't know if you've ever seen film grain or anything. It creates a, it creates a noise, and depending on the amount that you put in, depends on how much noise it creates, and it's positive and negative. So negative says the water, and positive are the hills. Um, so it's basically creating a height map for you. Now I've seen people complaining already. Oh, it doesn't create rivers. So we can't make rivers. But you can make rivers. You can just join these bits up quite easily. <laughs> you can make your own rivers. This is, this could be a nice swooping river going around here. So it does take a little bit of work to get the map finished off. But I thought I'd press create roads. Did I not? I mustn't have done. It should have created roads in between these towns, but it hasn't done. Uh, maybe I didn't. <laughs> maybe I missed it by accident. Um, yeah, so you can take this into the map editor, or if you if you want to press C, H, and E together, it's cheat mode. Shea, it also spells. Uh, so C, H, E, press them all together, you get cheat mode. Then you press Control, E, and D. And if you look at the top there, we've switched. So Control E and D to switch back. This is your normal menu. Control E and D. This is your map editor menu. So in here you've got different, more powerful terrain tools. You've got much bigger brushes. It works a lot faster. Um, it can be quite brutal, so just be careful with it. Um, it's very easy to destroy a lot of stuff <laughs> when you're using them. Also the game needs to be playing. You can't you can't use them while the game's on pause if you're in the normal game mode. So let's just deactivate that. Uh, there are various things I use in the cheat mode, not while I'm playing, but 
mostly when I'm testing things out, when I'm testing out my mods and stuff, um, especially the bigger buildings that take a long time to build because you can press control U and speed it up so when I'm testing like the colours and the shading and all that sort of thing so some of them cheap controls do come in handy um, but I don't use them during the gameplay anyway so what we're saying basically is it will give you a, a sort of 60 to 70 percent complete map now one of the painstaking bits of making maps in the past, and I have made a, I've made a couple of maps, and it, they took me ages and ages because I had to go and put all the little towns in, and you know get the height ready and all that kind of stuff, and mess around with them, and it just even just getting it to this point would take quite a lot of work. So having a map that's sort of 70, maybe 80 percent complete, all I've got to do is go and join up rivers to make it. If I want to use boats, I've just got to go and. Clear some of the clear some of the way out and join them up. Now, I am going to start a new playthrough series on one of these maps, and I'm not going to actually mess around with the land to start with. I might go and do it as I go, as I move around the map, because it'll make a bit more sense where the rivers are going then, when I know where all my main buildings and things are going to be. So, let's have a look at some new buildings then. So, on the map we have uranium. So oh, this is what most people are going to want to see. They're going to want to know about the nuclear. Um, personally, I'm not that particularly bothered about this. Um, I don't. I play on hard settings, so I don't see me getting nuclear any <laughs> time. <laughs> any time, actually. Um, but yeah, we'll show you. Show you. So we've got some uranium around here somewhere. It says there. Up there, there we go. So. We'd need to build a, a mine up there on that hill. We'd probably have cable cars or something running down. Um, so you, your mine produces uranium ore. You then get away tooltip. You then got <laughs> your, your uranium processing plant, which will produce uh, uranium oxide from uranium ore. Uh, you'll require workers in both of those. Then you need a uranium conversion plant to convert uranium oxide into UF6 uh, which is for the power plant uh, again you need more workers for that you need power and then you've got your nuclear fuel fabrication which turns UF6 into nuclear fuel uh, again you need workers for that <laughs> uh, and then you've got your single reactor and your twin reactor and your cooling towers so these are big you've got, you've got a twin reactor there that will produce 9360 megawatt hours of power uh, 4680 megawatt hours so that is how much power it will produce on an hourly basis at full capacity um, and you have your cooling towers as well now you need to connect up a cooling tower this in and out um, connections on these so in order for your nuclear power plant to work it needs to be connected to a cooling tower and you've got in and out whoops sorry I'm Trying to move around as gently as possible and the camera's fighting me. Um, so there, at the front there, you've got these little wind things. Um, and these are in the pipelines here. So you've got your cooling pipe connections there and you can build them. Now, another new feature is something in the past, when you built pipes, um, if you deleted part of them, you would delete the entire pipe in one go and it could be quite costly. But now, you can actually go and delete section by section you don't have to delete the whole thing uh, you have to go as far as a node as people who've played this for a long time know about the nodes but basically I'll show you in a second let's um, do that bit right so I'm just gonna press my highlight key here so you get these on tracks and roads and what a node is is this purple point here and this purple point is a node and when they and this purple point is a node and that one is a node so when you've got paths and roads and you've got these nodes this is how the game how the game's pathing system works it will go from node to node to node to node the more node the more complicated the pathing gets so the more uh, the more it draws down on your frame rate as well so when people have been asking why walking distance couldn't be increased and things like that it's, it's because of performance issues they've had to make alterations to programming in order to get increases 
Um, so it's, it's needed better performance in order to be able to increase. Now walking distance and car travelling distance have both been increased as well. Um, if you just bear with me one second. Right, sorry about that, I just needed to bring the uh, list of things up on the other screen because I just want to make sure I don't forget anything. Right, so walking distances and car travelling distances have been increased. Um, they can now go about 400 metres I think. Also, um, the way that the game displays the distances has changed. So, in the past, if you had a, a mud road, a, a mud path and a, a gravel path, it would show it would show the same distance, but one would read further than the other. And it was to do with walking speed. So, say there was a house here and a, a shop here, and it was like 200 metres along the gravel path it might be 300 meters on the dirt road um, and that was down to how it displayed the walking speeds that's now changed it's now it's now displaying it properly so you can see the actual distance um, so what you would get in this situation like this say you had a shop down here is it would only reach I think 60% of the way up the road yeah, 60% is the walking speed, so you got, and then you've got 112%, so that one will go a little bit further. So what you would see now is, is you would see a clear difference in between the actual distances, and that, that will show you the proper distances now. I hope that makes sense. <laughs> it's kind of hard to explain, really. Um, so, yeah, so walking range is in, increasing, personal car range has increased also, so cars are a bit more effective. Um, oops! Hey, sorry, sorry about my dog. Next door's kids are out in the garden. <laughs> I've had to shut the door so they're not running in and out barking. Um, we've got <laughs> a bit of a distraction. My uh, my long-term viewers will know all about my dog's barking. So apologies to uh, apologies to everyone. Right, so new wires. So we've got new high-voltage wires. So we've got these. We've got these. We've got these, we've got these, we've got a save game, we've got these, we've got these, and we've got these. Now, these are not just aesthetically different. They do look different. There's a good selection of them. So we've got single post here, double post, and you've got this triple high one, and you've got these strange inner ones. The difference is though is they range now from 4 megawatt to 18 megawatts so these are the capacity of how much electricity you can put down a line whereas in the past we only had one that did 14 watts uh, 14 megawatts now we've got a choice of different ones so these ones are a lot cheaper than these ones to build so these ones use a lot less steel than these so if you're building out to a rural rural area, you're probably only going to want to use these. But if you're going out to a heavy industrial area, you're going to want to use these ones. Same with the medium voltage. Now we have a we have a selection. We've got four in here from 0.65 up to 2.35. Um, still got the same substation and everything. So yeah, little wooden poles. Um, a bit more powerful wooden poles, and we've got some small electrics. Uh, some metal ones and then some just a bit more powerful metal ones so they've changed as well so we've got those options now um, and it just it, it just allows you the I like the fact that we've got a, a, a cheaper and dearer options in the in the power cables now rather than just having to have the one expensive power uh, high voltage power lines running all over the place we can now break it up a bit and make things a bit more cost effective so um I'm not going to build a nuclear power plant. You can have a look at it. Do it by doing that. If you're wondering what I've done there, if you click on a building and you move your mouse over this construction menu, as long as you keep your mouse over the construction menu, you can move the screen around. Just when you're turning, just watch, because if you go over the edge, it'll flick your building back again. So, <laughs> it's one way of seeing buildings without actually having to build them. Um, yeah, so that's the single reactor. This is the twin reactor. As you can see, there's absolutely loads of connections on it. 
Um, I think it emits power as well. Your cooling towers, big. Small key, uranium mine. That was probably comparable with the other mine size. Your processing plant. Conversion plant. And a fuel fabrication. So that's your nuclear and that's your power lines. Now, now on to my favourite features. <laughs> These are the things that I've been looking forward to. Um, the mod menu. Oh my god, the mod menu is so much better. Thank you, thank you, thank you Peter and your team for making so much of an improvement to this because it was so painful having this little window open with one <laughs> one little row of buildings. They had like 30 old rows. I mean, I have added quite a few to this. I did have 30 buildings in one pack. Um, yeah, I had like, what, 36 rows, I think, pages. And I could only see like five or six at a time. It was really painful going through them. It's, it's been awful. Um, so this is a huge improvement. Um, so, you building this stuff now. You can see things a lot easier. Now, there's also, which window is it? One of the windows now got a scroll bar on it as well. Um, I think it might have been the construction office, you know, but I'm, I can't remember. Some of the windows have got vertical scrolling on them, so rather than popping off the bottom of the screen, you can now actually scroll up and down in the windows, which is a, a huge improvement as well. Um, so what have we got now? We've covered most of this screen mark search tool we've got this here and what this does is this allows you to go and have a look and you can see where your population numbers are so you can actually see building by building it will show you a little symbol and a number next to it so you can have low education workers high education workers uneducated workers children children up to 21 children 21 plus so citizens during the free time um, these are citizens living preferences so you can see where they want to go where higher education people would rather live the numbers are higher um, so you can see where the preferences are so you can it's something I really need to have a good look at as well I need to have a real play around with it to really get my teeth into it but it, it, it's good for finding and referencing things um, especially so if you've got large areas of unemployment and things, it's a lot easier to pinpoint where those people are. So you might want to put extra bus services going in or more education facilities if the people aren't educated enough. Um, so that's that. That's a, It's just a very handy search tool, which makes just makes life a, a little bit easier. Now, of course, we're going into night time. I should have left that off, really. Um... Let me just have a quick look at the list again. Let me just have a quick swig of my coffee. Now then. Um, yeah, the terrain flattening has been improved. So there has been improvements made to this. I'm not going to do any right now, but um, that has been improved. Another thing, if I can find a border place. That's something I didn't look at. I meant to mention that actually when, I, when we created the map. Sometimes the border checkpoints don't generate. Now what you're looking for is a road going off the edge of the map. So we've got three there and one there. Which I think gives us three NATO. There's one. There's the other. There's the other. Three NATO and one Soviet by the looks of it. Yeah, I have had them generate where they've generated without any checkpoints at all. So before you start playing, just make sure you've got <laughs> you've got border points, uh, customs houses, because you're going to need them if you want to sell stuff uh, and you're going to need electricity and things. But now, what you can do now is you can actually buy from the customs houses. So you can send trucks to here. So if you if you're selling stuff as well, say you. I don't know, say you're making clothing down here or something and you're selling it, you could be picking stuff up and bringing it back from the customs house and that way you're not going to be paying any delivery charges on it. You are going to pay for fuel until you've got your own fuel obviously, um, but the ability to be able to buy goods from the customs houses is a huge difference. I really like that feature. I think that's something that's really good. My other favourite new feature is in the storages and warehouses. 
and its distribution offices. These are a complete game changer. <laughs> I hate that term because some people use it like it's oh this is a game changer that's a game changer look a different colored tree oh what a game changer and it's like no come on a game changer is something that does actually change the game significantly and this this distribution office is something that is going to change the game significantly and the reason being is i will explain to you in one second when i've built the thing i'm gonna take it off fast forward as well before we uh before we end up going back to night time of course i built a bit of a wonky road there <laughs> a bit of a hill. Um, let me just right, let me just speed that up. <laughs> so C H E for cheap menu, Control U. It doesn't. It still costs you the same to build it. And just speed it up a bit. Um, right. So distribution offices. What you can now do with these is you can set. Say we've got a farm and a food manufacturer up here. We can tell the distribution office to go and collect food and deliver it to the shops down here. Now, that sounds simple enough. It, 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 it is, but it is really, it does really change the way you're doing things because now rather than having trucks going doing it, what you can do is you can say, when the shop gets to 30% empty, go and pick up some more food and deliver it and you can set it to say five shops and as each one of the shops starts getting down to a certain amount of food the trucks will go out get the food and take it to the shop that needs it first so as soon as one it's 30 percent that shop has got a truck on its way so whereas in the past you would have had a truck going back and forward to each shop maybe that means one or two of the shops could have been waiting without food for ages depending on where the truck is and where it's getting stuck and stuff so now it's it's, it's going to make distribution so much so much easier you don't need to have loads and loads of different trucks running back and forward to various places you can have them sitting here and if your shops are full they can just sit here and wait there until the food actually runs down and you can give them multiple orders as well so you can tell them to go to different places which is here on the manage office task so you add a new connection to add a new building where it's going to maybe a warehouse or a storage facility or even directly to food producing or whatever and you can tell them start distributing cargo when storage is less as x percent so if you want 50 percent if you want them to come to the shops when there's 50 percent full so you can also use these between industries as well so you can go and pick up your raw goods um, and then take them to the places where you're going to manufacture them into finished goods um, you can use them for that as well so distribution offices absolutely fantastic um, that is that is definitely going to change the way how I play the game that and the uh, being able to buy from the customs houses as well I haven't tested it out I'm fairly sure you can add a customs house yeah you can go and buy from the customs house um, or can you? Not giving me any options. Maybe not. Oh yeah, there we go. There we go. That's fine. So yeah, it needs vehicles in order to be able to have the options. So there we go. We can actually go and buy directly from the customs house. Ship the goods to a manufacturer if you want to do that. And then maybe deliver the goods back to the customs house that you finished off to make a profit. Um, yes I know that's not long term viability but we're not going to get into gameplay mechanics now at the moment we're talking about updates so <laughs> so yeah there you go so distribution offices huge 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 improvement now then um, we'll have a look at the harbours in a minute There's, they've added some new harbours but um, I did not oh yeah I, I, there is something I just wanted to um show you first I just need to find a bit of a there's not many very flat bits on this map that's the edge of the map let's go inland a bit there we go somewhere over here we've got a bit of room um this is some new upgrades to the roads so I'm sorry about my frantic camera movement I'm very much out of practice I haven't got in videos for ages so apologies if it's a little bit all over the place right now then corners you can now make corners. You've now got bendy roads. 
and these roads can bend you can have them going straight you can have them bend in if you want the old road method you press shift so new road method you have to build a little straight bit first if you come in if you're starting off in the middle it'll always give you a straight road if you're starting off in a blank area so unless you're coming off another bit of road it's always going to give you a straight road so you always need to start with a little bit of straight road and then you can get your corners also what you can do is you can increase the rate of the corner so if you want a really big corner and it's not giving it you so that's only going to give me to there but I want that I want a bigger corner so we can use a scroll wheel on the mouse to actually increase the rate you can make it as big as you want I don't know if there's any limitations to this I've not really tried out how big you can actually go but if you want to create a big circular loop around the city or something you can do oh yeah and if you want to go back to the old method shift so you've got shift to do that to, to make it straight let go of shift to get your curvy roads scroll wheel again um, now I have seen I have seen somebody kind of make this a little bit janky with one of the corners I'm not quite sure how he did it because I haven't managed to get it to look as bad as he did but <laughs> as always with this game there's always there's always ways of making things look bad so it, it depends on how you do things if you if you practice and you're good with placing things you can always make things look good and nice and neat um, flattening land is also it's gone dark again flattening land is also something when you're placing buildings if you if you want nice neat looking cities level the land first you know, go in with your bulldozers, get a construction office, stick some bulldozers and excavators in there, and then go around and level it all off first. If you've got a nice flat area to build on, it will make your building placement a heck of a lot easier. You're not going to have anywhere near as much trouble getting things placed. So yeah, these are these are uh, these are amazing. Now, let's just whack a bit of road up there, cause. Um, what I want to show you here, let's go, let's grab a warehouse, shall we? Uh, let's just stick a warehouse in here. Now, you, you, you always used to just connect up like this. So, if, you, if you've got an unbuilt road, an unfinished road, you're always going to get road connections when you're placing buildings, and it'll split your road up. Now, you can actually switch it on and off with control. So, left control can actually turn off your road connections or your footpath connections if it's a house or something if you don't want them to auto connect you can turn it off that is a, that is brilliant that's a definite improvement that I, I, I approve of very much so that's something I've wanted for quite a while so con left control switch it off without control it will automatically connect now what else automatically connects now is your, your factory connections <laughs> pipes and conveyors also so now you can go and build your, your connectors up. So say you want to build a, um, a fault lift connection. So rather than having to go and place all these individually and then go and place in all the, the fault lifts, you can actually get them to do it. And again, control will switch it off. So if you want to place them and then manually place your connections. Also, these have been, in, these have been increased quite a lot. <laughs> I saw it nice, it was giving me a nice round the corner. Yeah, look, it's even going there. Oh, that's just, that's just so much better, so much better. That kind of makes life a lot easier for the conveyor connections as well, because if you've got a, you've got a conveyor belt over here, you can actually, you can actually move it around to get the connection that you want. Which makes my roll crossings a tad redundant. <laughs> doesn't actually because my uh, my conveyor my road conveyor connections allow you to build parallel with a straight road and get right tight up which you can't do with these you need a bit of room but this oh, I tell you what I would have I'd have given you my left arm for this 12 months ago when the game came out and the amount of hours I spent fighting these things I used to hate them <laughs> with a passion that's why I built the uh, the road conveyor crossings that is still a useful mod because it's it, like I said it allows you to build right up next to the road which you can't you can't really do that well with these but um, the automatic connection thing now yeah huge improvement press control to disable it let go of control to enable it 
So we're coming up on the half an hour. I wanted to limit this to a half an hour. So we'll just have a quick look at the boats. The boats, the boats. So we've got a collection of new harbours. So we've got the cargo harbour small, which is that one. That was in there before, I do believe. Um, we've got cargo harbour medium. Aggregate loading. Aggregate unloading. Pumping harbour, that's a new one. Passenger harbour small, passenger harbour medium, and then you've got your docks and your dry dock and stuff. Now, obviously, it's not going to build them there. You need to be on level land, but I'll just like to show you them quickly. So, a new selection of cargo harbours, including a pumping harbour for oil. So, if you want to sell oil um, or fuel or anything by boat. Now, what they've also done is, rather than the boat pulling up to the border, the boat was coming to the border and stopping. You now need to have an outside connection. So you need a river capable of taking a boat to an outside water place if you want to sell, because now they're going to go off the map. Um, so if I wanted to export, I'd have to go and join some of these rivers up, build some docks, and then export via... Uh, via oil... Uh, via what via the river <laughs> to a, to an outside border so you definitely need an opening if you if you landlocked your boats won't be able to get out even if it is over the even if it is over the border so if this was connected here the boats wouldn't be able to get out right now that it's gone dark <laughs> i've shown you everything now i'm going to start a brand new playthrough series like i said on a similar map to this uh, i'm going to go pick a map that i like i've got one that i quite like so might generate a couple more and see if there's anything else that takes my fancy any better than that one. Um, so thanks for watching everybody. Um, I hope you like the new updates. Um, as I said, I'm going to be using I'm going to be using them in my playthrough series. So if you want to see me, if you want to see how they're operating, how the how the distribution offices are working and so forth, then I'm going to be doing maybe two or three episodes a week. Probably not more than that. Reason being is because obviously I'm, you know, I'm busy making mods a lot of the time, which is why I haven't been recording videos for my channel for quite a while. I've just been really busy with Blender, and that just takes up all my time now. So, um, but I do want to get back to making some videos as well. So I'm going to try and balance between the two. So maybe a, a new mod or a couple of new mods every week, and maybe two, maybe three episodes a week of this. Um, but I will go through all the new features and I'll present all my mods. I've been asked if I would do a video showing all my all my mods that I've, I've made and stuff and talk, talk through the thought process. But I'll do that as and when I use them throughout the, throughout the playthrough series. So thanks everybody again for watching. I hope you're all well. <laughs> I hope you're all safe. Hope you enjoyed this one. Um, I'll see you all very soon for another one. Bye.